chiefest of sinners, Jesus will save as he has promised, so will he do. O sinner, hear him, trust in his word, then he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Judgment is coming, all will be there who have rejected, who have refused. Oh, sinner, hasten, let Jesus in, then God will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Oh, what compassion, oh, boundless love. Jesus hath power, Jesus is true. All who believe are safe from the storm. Oh, he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood when I see the blood when I see the blood I will pass I will pass over you turn on over to 368 and let's sing what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus amen What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's not of good that I have done, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood. I think we ought to go back and sing that third again and remember that it's nothing can for sin atone. It's not of good that we have done. It's nothing this morning but the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes
makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask her to play softly, everybody that will, all you preachers. Let's gather around the altar and have a good altar prayer. And uh, Brother Shannon Mapp, if you come, I want you to come lead us to the Lord in prayer this morning. And Lindsay, brothers, if y'all come on up here. Amen. It's good to be in God's house, isn't it? And we met to worship God. But let's sanctify this day, give it to the Lord, ask God's blessing on it, pray for the will of God, everything that will be said. has been good to me on this journey he's blessed me with friends and a family so dear I have a place to reside and food on my table Somehow I cannot, no, I cannot feel at home here. I'm longing for where no goodbyes are spoken. I'm longing for where no pain will be known. Things of this earth cannot satisfy me. Though I'm happy and free down inside of me, I'm longing for home. This old robe of flesh will one day be quicker. This mortal's gonna put on immortality. I have brand new feet that will not grow weary. New hands that won't fail, a new body as well. Like Jesus I'll be. I'm longing for where no goodbyes are spoken. I'm longing for where no pain will be known. The things of this earth cannot satisfy me. Though I'm happy and free down inside of me, I'm longing for home. That's right. My grace. I searched for a way of escape from the prison of sin that held me but the more that I tried the worse that it got there was nothing I could do that would help me but then I heard about a man named Jesus who had grace enough for me a vast supply he had grace sufficient the grace that I needed, he had grace to save a sinner like me. All oh, sufficient grace, grace so amazing, the riches of his grace, of this I'm undeserving. But God in His mercy saved a sinner like me. I'm redeemed and forgiven. 
my sins are forgotten, forever I'm pardoned, I'm free. I'm free from the guilt of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. For I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. My glad heart is singing by day and by night. My soul overflows with a wondrous delight. My joy will I share with the sin weary race. For I have been saved. By grace, saved, hallelujah, saved, hallelujah, saved by his wonderful, marvelous grace. I'll sing of his love till I see him above. For I have been saved by grace. His mercy, His goodness has never been told. And heaven alone will His glories unfold. For there He has gone to prepare us a place. For I have been saved by grace, saved, hallelujah, saved, hallelujah, saved by His wonderful, marvelous grace. I'll sing of his love till I see him above. For I have been saved by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for grace. Amen. And I appreciate Brother John Hill. He pastors Temple Baptist Church in Murfreesboro, uh, Tennessee. And he's going to come preach our first message. And you pray for him this morning. In the, in the New Testament, to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. The last book in the Word of God. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And we'll be looking in the sixth chapter. The song that the Lindsay brothers just sang reminds me of the Queen of Sheba. How when she saw Solomon, she said, The half hasn't been told unto me. And the half wasn't told unto me when I first came to know Christ, but after I came to know Him. Boy, I got so much more than what I asked for. Uh, the only thing I knew as a six-year-old boy when I called on God to save me was I, was I didn't want to go to hell. I knew I was a sinner, but I got a whole lot more than I asked for. I praise the Lord for that good singing. It's good to be saved. And uh, you pray for me. I'm nervous. Amen. And uh, starting out the first message, the preacher said, I'm preaching your first set the tone for the meeting. You're talking about pressure. Amen. But uh, you ask the Lord to touch us and to help us. And you be open and receptive to what the Lord has for us today. We're preaching a Bible message. And if it's out of the Bible, it's going to be good. All right. And uh, you may think that this is odd that I'm preaching on this subject and, uh, but this is no doubt what the Lord has laid upon our hearts. And so you pray that the Lord will touch us and help us in thinking on these thoughts, especially in the days and times that we live in. Let's all stand, please, in reverence to reading the Word of God. Revelation chapter number 6. 
In this passage teaches us about the tribulation period that is going to come. As a matter of fact, our Lord Jesus Christ parallels this passage in Matthew chapter number 24. In Revelation chapter number 6, I want us to read together if that's all right, preacher. I would like for all of us to read together. Uh, because if you don't necessarily get a blessing out of my sermon, at least you'll get a blessing out of reading out of the book of the Revelation. Because it says, Blessed is he that readeth this book. So let's all read together, please. Verse number 1, down through verse number 8 together. Revelation 6, let's start, please, in verse number 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And they, they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse... And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And may the Lord add his richest blessings for the reading of his precious word. All of God's people said? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate you standing. Uh, These verses teach us about the initiation and the inauguration of the tribulation period. And as I just referred to a while ago, these passages I believe are parallel there in Matthew chapter number 24 where the disciples asked our Lord Jesus Christ, what is the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? And I'm thankful our Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, don't you worry about that. He didn't want them to be ignorant. He didn't want to leave them in the dark. He gave them explicit details of what is going to be taking place in the last of the last days. And what we find here in Revelation chapter number 6 is how the tribulation period opens up. I'm here to submit to us this morning that the seven year tribulation period is not going to be three and a half years of ease and then the last three and a half years one of goodness. No friend, you and I need to understand it's going to be a full time of Jacob's trouble. It's not going to be a time and a half of Jacob's trouble or half of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be time of full of Jacob's trouble. And what we have here in chapter number 6 is that the first four judgments that will precede the seal judgment They're going to be of horses. Figures of a white horse. Figures of a red horse. Figure of a black horse. And the figure of a pale horse. You see the white horse I call the white horse of domination. Because the Bible says there in verse number 2 that when he sees the white horse, he sat on him, had a bow in his hand, a crown was given unto him. And look at the next phrase. He went forth conquering and to conquer. That's why I say he's the white horse of dominion. He is going to conquer the whole world, but he's not going to conquer it with with not even one fire being shot from a gun. He's not going to conquer it with a sword. He's going to conquer it with his sayings, friend. He's going to conquer the world having a bow in his hand that does not have an arrow. He's going to deceive the nations. He's going to come having smooth words. He's going to come saying he has all the answers and he has all the solutions and they're going to put him in in power uh, and he's going to be the one world leader and dominate the globe just from his words. 
Boy, I can stop and park right there, friend. How then this day and time we have all these smooth talkers. Uh, we have all these in our politicians. Uh, and sad to say, even in our pulpits, uh, they're relying on their charisma. They're relying on their personality. Uh, I'm here to tell you, the devil has a personality as well, friends. Uh, and it's to deceive and destroy all that it touches. The second horse you'll find is the red horse. It's the red horse of division. Nation's going to go against nation. The Bible says they'll be killing one another. There was given unto him a great sword there in verse number 4. The black horse is the black horse of destitution. For The Bible says there'll be famine, there'll be pestilence. I mean, the, the grocery market. You're talking about escalation prices now? Honey, we haven't seen nothing yet till the tribulation period starts. I mean, friend, you, you say, well, there's going to be Walmart around. I'm going to tell you, friend, Wally World's going to be abandoned warehouses during this day and time. You won't be able to go to the banks. Uh, friend, the stock market will collapse, uh, and that black horse will have his pestilence there, uh, and people will be literally starving to death all over the world while that black horse is reigning. And then there's the pale horse of destruction. For the Bible says in verse number 8 that his set on him was death, Hell followed with him. Look what the Bible says. Fourth part of the earth is going to be killed, friend. That's literally millions and even getting into the billions of people with our day of population. I mean, what a horrific time we're living in. I want to focus my attention on for the next few moments, though, on this red horse. This red horse there in verse number 4, it says this red horse is a horse of division. And he's going to come, and it's red because of the blood that's going to be shed. Nation's going to rise against nation. It's going to take peace from the earth. The peace that was once given out, which is a false peace, he's going to take that, and the Bible says people are going to start killing one another. It's given unto him a great sword. What I'm preaching this morning is nothing new. I'm sure as I'm looking out in this audience, many of you are skillful in the Word. Many of you know about prophecy and end times. But I believe after studying this passage of Scripture and what we're seeing going on in this day and time, that Russia is leading the way for this red horse, friend. And so this morning, for just the next few moments, I want to preach about the red horse of Russia. The red horse of Russia. Now listen to me, friends. You and I know where Russia is. If you get on a map, as a matter of fact, there's a map there in the church for you here. Russia is the largest country as far as landmass is concerned. It doesn't have the most in population, but Russia covers over six and a half million square miles. And the Bible prophesies about this land called Russia, friends. Hey, I know some of you maybe dove off the deep end back in 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. But I'm here to tell you that hibernating bear has come back out. And when a hibernating bear comes out, he's a hungry bear, friend. And that's what this Russian bear is doing even in this day and time. Friend, Russia, as we know, is in the history books. And I'm not going to bore you and I'm not going to bog you down with the history and things of that nature. But I'm here to tell you all the way back through its history, it's always been a dictatorship nation. It's always been a God-hating nation. It's always been anti-Jew, anti-Jesus, anti-Jehovah. It's a nation that hates God. It's a nation that kills millions and millions of people just so it can have its power and its prestige on the face of this world. You go all the way back to Stalin, go all the way back to Lenin, go all the way back uh, to even Gorbachev, who killed over 10 million Christians, friend. Russia, no doubt, is in the history books. Russia is in our headline broadcast today. I mean, right now, it's right in front of us with what's going on in Ukraine, friend. I mean, do you realize that Russia is an enemy to our country? Hey, everybody was laughing at Mitt Romney years ago. When he said our greatest geopolitical foe is Russia. And even our current president laughed at him on national television and said terrorism is the, most, is the most worst thing that's going on. I wonder what's going on in the president's mind right now, friend. 
Hey, even Sarah Palin back in 2008 predicted that Russia may even try to go into countries and she even named Ukraine to try to take it back over. I'm here to tell you, friend, that Russian bear is out from hibernation and that Russian bear is being set up and we're seeing signs of the times in our day and time, friend. And that's exciting to me, praise God. Because you know what? You and I, we're not going to be around during the tribulation. <laughs> if you and I are saved, we're going to be raptured out of here. We're going to be leaving in a cloud of glory, friend. And we'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. I'm not looking for signs. But praise God, I'm seeing the signs now that are seven years later after the rapture. How much closer are we this morning to the threshold of Jesus Christ coming back again, friend? Russia's in the headline broadcasts. Do you realize that President Putin is a former KGB agent? That's Soviet Union times, friend. He's a hungry bear. He wants to take over. Amen, friends. And you say all these weapons of mass destruction. I'm more concerned about the weapon of mass disruption. These EMPs. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Do, do you realize that our country now is totally geared toward electronics? If you don't believe that, then your head is in the sand like an ostrich. I mean, just go to the restaurant. You have family sitting at the table, and they can't even talk to one another. They're sitting there on their phones, uh, looking at everything that's going on on the Facebook, seeing who tweeted or who twat or who twittered or whatever you want to call it. I mean, we are control-driven by electronics. Do you realize there was a general in our army that came up not too long ago? and said that our USA military used to be able to fight two wars at one time, but we have so gotten rid of our infantry and relying more on these Scud missiles and atomic bombs and relying so more on these drones that we're only able, as far as an infantry goes, to fight one war at a time now. And an EMP, listen to me, EMP has been on the news. Russia sold North Korea an EMP back in November. Do you realize that Russia has land in Cuba, has land in Venezuela, and has set up a base there for weapons of mass disruption and destruction? I wonder why they want to build one in Cuba. I wonder why they want in Venezuela. Amen, friend. Nobody get nervous and nobody fall out with me over this, but I've read this Bible from cover to cover. I do not see the United States of America not in one page of this Bible, friend. And the silence tells me that it's the silent doom of America, friend. Amen, friend. Just one EMP will wipe out all of our electronics and they say one EMP in one year will destroy 90% of the United States of America. We'll have to go find where the Amish people are and get them to teach us some things. So we know Russia's in the headline broadcast, but Russia is in the Holy Bible. Not just in the history books. Not just in our headline broths. It's in the Holy Bible, friend. You say, where in the world is Russia? Turn back with me, please, to Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter number 38. Hold your finger there. You've got to be a little coordinated now if you're going to hold your finger in Revelation 6. But we're going back there, okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 38. If you're still with me, say Amen. amen. What we find here in Ezekiel 38 is the battle of Gog and Magog. And I'm not going to elaborate on this. There's many books out, many other preachers you could hear about these things. Many of you are already skillful and studied and know what these passages are referring to. This is not the battle of Armageddon here. This is a totally different battle. A battle that I believe will take place years before that final battle of Armageddon when Jesus comes back riding on His white horse. And the Bible teaches about this man named Gog who's from the land of Magog, that's going to rise up against God's people. But he's not going to be alone. Look what the Bible teaches us, friend, there in verse number 5. The Bible talks about Persia is going to go up against them. Persia is the land of Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Do we not know those nations to be anti-Jew, anti-Jesus nations? Also, the next one there is Ethiopia. 
Ethiopia is going to be the, not just Ethiopia and Africa, but the Sudan and also Somalia. And then you have Libya that is mentioned there. There. Then you have Gomer. Some say that's Germany, the east side, or some say that's the latter part of Turkey. Then you have Togomar, which no doubt is Turkey. But what is Magog here? You go back to verse number 2, it says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog. I challenge you, when you leave here, to Google or study it out for yourself. Magog is always the land that's above the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And there's only one nation that's above those seas, friend. And it's a pretty big nation. It's a six and a half million square mile nation. It's the nation of Russia, friend. Russia is in Bible prophecy. We've heard for years about how Iran, about how Pakistan, about Syria, about Jordan, about Egypt, how they all hate the Jews, how they all said they're going to push them into the Mediterranean Sea. I'm here to tell you, friend, now we have Russia coming up on the scene. And Russia has now lifted up his ugly head. And guess who is Russia's friends, friend? Guess who's Russia is combining with? He's combining with these Arab nations. Nations. He's combining with all of these anti-Jehovah nations. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes, friend. All these weapons that are being found by these terrorist groups, they have stamps on them made in Russia. Oh yes, friend, it's coming here. The Holy Bible teaches us about this battle of Gog and Magog. And I'm here to submit to us this morning that the battle of Gog and Magog is the red horse of the tribulation period. You say, how in the world is that going to take place, preacher? Well, if you look down with me, please, there, in verse number 15 of this chapter, I know that this is Russia because the Bible says, and thou shalt come from thy place, out of the... What's the two words, words there, church? Not just north. North parts. As high as you can go. And as high as you can go above that black and Caspian Sea, it's all Russia, friends. Hey, Russia didn't even exist during these Bible days. Aren't you glad this Bible, as Brother Sammy Allen always preaches, is more up to date than the newspaper that comes fresh off the press? I'm here to tell you, God knew what He was doing when He was pinning this book down for you and for me here in 2014, praise God. You say, how in the world do you know these things are going to come to pass? Well, look in verse number 11. I know that the red horse is Russia because of the safety in Israel. Do you realize verse number 11 tells us there, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Look back with me please in verse number 8. The Bible says, After many days thou shalt be visited, and the latter years thou shalt come back into the land that is brought back from the sword. This is going to be a time of peace in Israel. A time where there's safety. If we read the rest of the part of verse number 11, unwalled villages, they had walls back in those days. Why? So the enemies wouldn't come in. Well, why would there not be walls? Because they're not concerned about attacks anymore. They're at peace. And look with me, please, there in the rest of verse number 11. I will go to them that are at, what's the word there, church? That dwell, what's the word there? There's only going to be two times where Israel's going to have peace. Only two times. We know they're not at peace right now. Can I get a witness on that? One time they're going to have peace is during that millennial reign period and it's going to be after that all of eternity. Amen? But there's another peace they're going to have and it's not even really peace. It's going to be a false peace. It's going to be that false peace by the Antichrist, friend. That white horse that's going to...